This is a GMAT data sufficiency sample question. This is a 700 level question. This question, this practice question is from the topic inequalities. Focuses on the concept of inequalities applied on exponents, a power b, b power a. Right? It also touches upon our understanding about which numbers are larger, which are lesser, positive numbers, negative numbers. A little bit of number systems is also tested in this question. The crux of solving this question involves one very important tool, which is usage of counterexample. Counterexamples is a very useful tool in solving a lot of data efficiency questions. We'll be utilizing counterexamples extensively for this particular question. Get started with the question. The question is, is A less than B? Let's spend again half a minute at this point before we move any further. The question is, is A less than B? Many times we'll summarize things in our mind. We'll say that they're trying to compare A with B. Yes, comparing A with B, we're trying to find out whether A is greater than B, A is less than B, A is equal to B. That is what comparing A and B. This question framed as is A less than B could give a completely different answer as far as data efficiency goes. Vis-a-vis -vis framing the same question is as is A greater than B. In both cases, we are actually comparing A with B. This question could give you an answer which is E. This question could give you an answer which is C or B. We do not know what it is. I haven't evaluated it. But read the question and just evaluate what that question is. Don't summarize it. Sometimes the generalization and summarizing could lead to an incorrect answer. Before we look into the statements, before we venture into the statements, let's quickly get a handle on what kind of a question is this. At the outset, it's a B verb question. It's an is question. The answer to any is question is an yes or a no. When is the data sufficient? If you get a definite S, the data is sufficient. A definite yes for us would be when A is less than B. You are able to confidently say that if this information is available to me, I can say without an iota of doubt that A is less than B. Then the answer is yes, data will be sufficient. The answer is sufficient even if you get a definite no. That's what it is. A definite no also means that the data is sufficient. If you get a convincing no, then the data is sufficient. When is it a convincing no? The question is, is A less than B? So a no is going to happen when A is greater than B. That's one instance. It can also happen when A is equal to B. In both these instances, we'll get a no as an answer. A definite yes or a definite no, the data is sufficient. If we get an inconclusive answer, when we say sometimes the answer is yes and sometimes it is no, then the data is not sufficient. Right? We've got a handle on what kind of a question, what kind of answer, when is the data sufficient, what does it mean when we say yes, what does it mean when we say no. So we've got all of that clarity. Let's venture into the statements. Let's start with statement one. Statement one tells us that a raised to the power of b is less than b raised to the power of a. The approach I'm going to take, as I said, this question is going to be completely through and through. We are going to be looking for only counter examples. So this will tell you that in many cases, your ability to find counter examples is going to be key to getting those questions right and getting those answers really fast. When you're looking for counterexamples, a good approach to look for counterexamples, take this as a mnemonic to look at it. FNZI is what I would want you to look for when you're looking for counterexamples, right? Case where it will work and a case where it will not work. Where all is it not likely to work? How do you find those instances? Look for counterexamples in fractions, in negative numbers, in taking one of the numbers as zero, or finally look at integers. Typically, when we look for numbers, we look at only integers, which is where things don't seem to have a counterexample. We look at fractions, we look at negative numbers, we look at negative fractions, if we look at zero, those are places where these counterexamples could actually be hiding. Looking at an example, the example should satisfy this condition that a power b is less than b power a. And I should either get a is less than b or a is greater than b. One of the two I should answer. And I should look for a counterexample which will satisfy the statement and give us an opposite conclusion. Let's see if that is possible. A is equal to a 1 and B is equal to a 10. Let's see whether this satisfies this condition A power B is less than B power A. A power B, B power A. A power B is 1 raised to the power of 10. B power A is 10 raised to the power of 1. This is 1, this is 10. So we've got an example which satisfies the condition A power B is less than B power A. So the statement holds good. What is the answer to the question? A is equal to 1, B equals 10, which means that A is less than B. The question is, is A less than B? If this example were taken, it satisfies the statement and it is giving us yes as an answer. Then we need to look for a no as an answer. Let's see how to get that counter example. Let's look at a case where let's say A is equal to 2 and B is equal to a minus 2. 
What is the value of a power b? a power b is equal to 2 power minus 2. b power a is equal to minus 2 raised to the power of 2. 2 power minus 2 is 1 by 2 square, which is a 1 by 4. Minus 2 raised to the power of 2 is a plus 4. 1 by 4 is less than 4. a raised to the power of b is less than b power a, which is what the statement said. So if I pick this example, the statement holds good. How do a and b compare? Is a less than b? a is equal to 2, b is equal to minus 2. a is a positive number, b is a negative number. In this case, a is greater than b. The answer to our question, is a less than b, is a conclusive no with this example. So, if you look at a power b less than b power a as information given to us, we have been able to find one example where the answer is yes. We have been able to find a counter example where the answer is no. We are able to find an yes and a no with this statement holding good which means that knowing that a power b is less than b power a is not going to help us determine whether a is less than b. So counter example exists, statement 1 alone is not sufficient. The moment statement 1 is not sufficient, let's rule out answer options a and d. What we are down to is b, c or e. Before we look at statement 2 to check whether it's b or whether it's c or e, whether the requirement is to combine it, let's summarize whatever we have discussed here in a printed form in the next slide. Right? We are looking at a counter example. I'm going with a equals 1, I went to the b equals 10, here we are going with b equals 100, it really doesn't matter. a power b is less than b power a for this example as well. a is less than b, is a less than b the question? The answer with this example is an yes. Looking for a counter example, go with a equals 2, b equals minus 2. Is a power b less than b power a? Yes, 1 by 4 is less than 4. So this condition is satisfied. Is a less than b? a equals 2, which is a positive number b equals minus 2 which is a negative number. In this case you have got a is greater than b which means that is a less than b. The answer to the question is a no. Both examples satisfy the condition given in the statement. One gave us yes as an answer, another has given us no as an answer which means that this statement is not giving us a conclusive answer. A counter example exists. Statement 1 alone is not sufficient. Eliminate answer options a and d. We are down to b, c or e. Let's evaluate statement 2 alone. Processes evaluate statement 1 alone then evaluate statement 2 alone. If you don't get a conclusive answer by evaluating the statements alone, only then we are going to combine. a by b, a upon b is greater than 1. What does this tell us? The magnitude of a should be greater than the magnitude of b. And both a and b should simultaneously be positive or simultaneously be negative, which is when the answer is going to be a positive number. Right? Let's look at, again, the as, uh, approach that we are going to be taking for this statement is also one of counterexample a upon b is greater than 1. I'm going to go with a is equal to a 5, b is equal to 3. Very evident that a upon b is greater than 1. In this case, if a equals 5, b equals 3, a is greater than b. If a is greater than b, the answer to our question is a less than b is a no. So if I went with this example, the answer is a no. Let's see if a counter example exists. This example, we're looking at a counter example. I'm going to go with a equals minus 5, b equals minus 3 a upon b is equal to minus 5 upon minus 3. Minus and minus will get cancelled. 5 upon 3 is a value which is 1.66 which is greater than 1. So if a equals minus 5, b equals minus 3, we still get this answer that a by b is greater than 1. So this example also satisfies this condition. a is a minus 5, b is a minus 3. On the number line, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3. As you go to the right, the value keeps increasing. a is here, b is here. A is to the left of B, which means that A is less than B. The question is, is A less than B? The answer to the question is an S if we went with this example. Both examples satisfy the condition A upon B is greater than 1. One has given us no as an answer, the other has given us yes as an answer. So statement 2 also is not giving us a conclusive answer because a counter example exists. Which means statement 2 alone is not sufficient. We were down to B, C or E after evaluating statement 1. 2 is not sufficient. So let's eliminate answer option B. We are down to C or E. Combine the two statements. Let's check out whether it is C or whether it's E. Before that, let's summarize this in a printed form. Going with A equals 5, B equals 3. A upon B is greater than 1. A is greater than B. Answer to the question is no. Going with minus 5, minus 3 for A and B. A upon B is still greater than 1. But in this case, A is less than B. Which means the answer to our question is an S. A counter example exists. Because a counterexample exists, statement 2 is not sufficient. Eliminate answer option B. We are down to C or E. Let's evaluate the statements together. A power B should be less than B power A. And A upon B should be greater than 1. Again going with counterexample as a means to achieve this. 
Let's look at an example. I'm going with, let's see if this makes sense. Going with A is equal to 10 and B is equal to 2. Let's see if this works. See, this is a lot of these things sometimes. See, I have done this once and I am doing it the second time in the video. So I have found out what examples actually work. Sometimes you might stumble upon a case where it's not going to work. So rework, look at positive, negative, look at various of these options to get to the answer. I don't want to be trying all of these in the video, then the video gets a little too long and it's not going to help anyone. I want to go with numbers which will actually work. But if I were to solve this question for the first time in the examination, there are quite a few instances where even I will not get, why I'm saying even, because I keep solving these math questions day in and day out. This is my bread and butter, right? So even despite doing so many counter examples, there are times when you'll stumble upon a case where it appears as if a counter example does not exist. In those instances, I'll keep telling me, hey, go back to the fundamentals. What will work, what will not work, right? Look, play, look for places. Where do I look for places for counter example? Let's look at fractions. Let's look at negative numbers. Let's look at zero. Let's then come to integers. So this is how I reassure myself to look for a counter example. If a counter example does not exist, then I'll try to reason out logically as to why the statement is sufficient. By not being able to find a counter example does not mean that a counter example does not exist. It could possibly mean that we are not able to find. If you think that we are not able to find, then we need to use logic to determine why the statement works. But if a counter example exists, you can say, hey, I found two cases, which means that this is not going to be sufficient. So counter example can be used to say that a statement is not sufficient. Not being able to find a counter example is not sufficient reason to conclude that the information is enough. Right? Let's look at this. A equals 10, B equals 2. So A power B, A raised to a power of B, B raised to a power of A. Let's see with this whether this condition will hold good. A power B is a 10 square. B power A is a 2 power 10, which is a 100. This one is a 1024. A power B is less than B power A. Statement 1 holds good with this example. A upon B is greater than 1. We don't even have to write it. We know that is equal to a 5. So this is greater than 1. So statement 2 also holds good. So if A is a 10, B is a 2, both statements hold good. What do we know about A and B now? Is A less than B? The answer is a no, because A is greater than B. So if this is the example we are going to go with, the answer to the question is a no. Let's look at a counter example. Good places to look for counter examples are fractions or negative numbers. I'm going to go with A to be equal to a minus 4 b to be equal to a minus 3. Let's check out whether statement 1 holds good with this. a raised to a power of b, b raised to a power of a. Let's check out what it is. Minus 4 raised to a power of minus 3, minus 3 raised to a power of minus 4. This is 1 by minus 4 cube. This is 1 by minus 3 raised to a power of 4. So a negative number raised to an odd power will be negative. The answer is minus 1 by 64. A negative number raised to an even power is going to be positive. This is 1 by 81. Forget the magnitudes of the fractions. The left hand side is a negative number, right hand side is a positive number. So this is lesser. So A power B is less than B power A for this example. So statement 1 holds good. Is A by B greater than 1? Yes, certainly. Don't even have to worry about it. This is 1.33. This is greater than 1. So statement 2 also holds good with this example. So A equals minus 4, B equals minus 3 also satisfies the information given in the two statements. How does A compare with B? A is a minus 4, B is a minus 3. On the number line, minus 4 is to the left of minus 3. So A is less than B. The question is, is A less than B? The answer to that question is yes, if we went with this example. With this example, which satisfied both the statements, we got no as an answer. With the second example, which satisfied both the statements, we got yes as an answer. So despite combining the statements, despite knowing that A power B is less than B power A, and A upon B is greater than 1, we are not able to conclude whether A is less than B. Sometimes we get a no as an answer. Sometimes we get yes as an answer, which means a counter example exists. Statements together are not sufficient. We were down to C or E. Statements together are not sufficient. C is not the answer. E is the answer. Let's eliminate C. Summarize it in a printed form and then move on. Going with A equals 10, B equals 2. Satisfies this condition. This is a 100 and this one is a 1024. This value is a 5. So it satisfies both the statements. We got A to be greater than B. The answer to our question is a no. Going with minus 4 and minus 3. A power B is a negative number. B power A is a positive number. So statement 1 holds good. A by B is a 1.33. So that is also holding good. So both statements hold good. A is a minus 4. B is a minus 3. Which means A is less than B. The answer to the question is an S. So despite combining, we've been able to find a counter example. Because a counter example exists, we don't have a conclusive answer. Statements together are not sufficient, which means it's eliminate answer option C. 
down to e which is the correct answer so the crux of solving this question or the beauty about this question is it's highlighting how to look for counter examples and how counter examples is an effective way to solve data sufficiency questions before you leave i want you to do two things one sign up as a trial user at the url given there wzko.in/core it's the most comprehensive and affordable gmat quant course online quant course that's available especially in these difficult times the best way to get started with the preparation without waiting for classrooms to begin is an online course because you save time on commute is a good way to plug in the extra time that you have especially many of you will be working from home to prepare for the gmat get started with the topic averages and statistics which is an easy topic to get going it's a lovely topic you spend about 6 to 7 hours in the course that is there and gain momentum into your gmat preparation once you gain momentum you can always pay and unlock the remaining topics behind the paywall second before you leave subscribe to this channel youtube.com/visaco and turn on notifications importantly until next time stay healthy stay safe and stay motivated